Let's have a look at the reasonable balance patch suggestions from Annoying Warcraft 3. Change speed auras to 10, 15, 20. Speed auras are too damn strong. I agree. They are. So if you did have those speed auras, such as Endurance Aura and Unholy Aura, you would need to reduce them down. What are they at the moment? Uh, I think they go up to 25. And that's down from the 30 they used to be, which is like the max level. So 10, 15, 20 is, you know, that's the idea, I think, in uh, inappropriate balancing, at least at this stage, because the game isn't in a terrible state. It's still pretty well balanced. It's just, if you're going to make changes, they've got to be pretty minor, I think, unless you've got enough to sort of balance everything overall. So, yeah, I'm not going to argue with the change in the speed auras. The only downside I have to that is it just kind of nerfs fun a little bit for those races that do get that speed aura. Do you see what I mean? But... But the actual sake of game balance, yeah, it's um, it's pretty uh, outrageous now. Back in the original days of Warcraft 3, people didn't usually abuse the aura of speed too much. The only race I can think of doing it would be Undead with Ghouls, so they can get in position with the Ghouls and surround units. But generally speaking, it wasn't used to the state that it is these days, where... Players really know how to min-max on the effectiveness of the aura they're getting. TC is still 30. Oh my god. Yeah, he shouldn't be, really. I think you're right, actually. I think TC is still 30. And the Unholy Aura is now 25. But I think, yeah, they should definitely be. Yeah, that's crazy. Change Brilliance Aura so it gives less to units, but buff human casters' mana regeneration. To try and make humans a little less dependent on Archmage pick. The biggest problem I have here is you'd have to really play around with the numbers because Brilliant Aura got nerfed at tier 3, didn't it? If you nerf it for tier 1 and tier 2, by a tier 1, tier 2, I mean like rank 1 and rank 2. How redundant is it? I suppose it could be a very minor nerf. Do you know what I mean? I think that's okay. We're talking like sort of, say for example it's 1, 1 1.5 and 2.25. I'm not sure if that's the numbers that it currently is. It would have to be something like 0.90. You you go down by like 0.1 or something for each. So it's a, it's a minor, but it's not going to completely make or break. But there is an importance to Archmage being able to spam out those water elementals because footmen are trash. They typically get killed off a lot. And then before you know it, your opponent's got a much larger army than you. And you actually depend on those water elementals a lot actually just to keep you alive so you can get some tier 2 out in time. Buffing the human casters, mana regeneration. I think that's a good idea. I could, it can be done for like all casters to a degree. Even, again, if it's just a small buff, it's still nice to allow casters to actually play as casters rather than do an ability once and then kind of go AFK for like 30 to 45 seconds, which is what they currently do a lot of the time. Change priest heal to be instant but adjust the cooldown, so total cooldown is the same. This would also help with Dispel casting. Now this is... Change the Priest heal to be instant. It is instant. Is it not? Or is there like a 0.5 before the heal actually goes through? I feel like if you put a Priest to heal, right now the Priest heal lasts for 0.5 seconds. There's a cast point. Okay. But adjust the cooldown, so total cooldown is the same. Yeah, they're slow when it comes to getting the dispels off. That's very true. They are definitely slow. Most of the time, if you try to dispel with a priest, it's so slow walking forward. And then by the time it gets to the location it needs to dispel, it either gets killed, or the units already moved out of that area for dispel. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, I'm not too sure of that. Okay, so yeah, if it starts to heal, then you just spell it. Delayed by the heal, that's fair enough. Yeah, no, I don't disagree with that. That's perfectly fine. Give that change. Change Druid of the Claw regeneration in bear form. Right now it's 25% less. Make it at least 50% less. You hate bears, do you? Some punishment for being a powerful tier 3 unit instead of a vulnerable caster. So what are we saying here? Claw, Druid of the Claw regeneration in bear form. I don't know. Like, how does this normally work? They, I thought it's just based on the health that they currently have. So if you cast Rejuvenate on a bear in bear form, 
it doesn't get so much from it because it's got a higher health pool. Or rather, it's not really changing that. But you say right now it's 25% less. Oh, the mana regeneration. Druid of the Claw re mana regeneration in bear form. Right now it's 25% less. Make it at least 50% less. Uh. Hmm. It would give more purpose. If you did that, would it not be more reasonable to increase the mana regeneration that Druid of the Claw gets whilst it's in caster form? So if you change this from like 25% to like 40% and then gave them an extra 10% on mana regeneration whilst in caster form. Because for those of you that don't know, if you're in bear form, you get less mana regeneration. If you come out of bear form, which is basically their cast form, so they can cast rejuvenation or raw. Well, they sometimes do it in bear form if they got the upgrade, but generally speaking, caster form, they regenerate more mana. You need a bit of a give and take on that one, I think. Because I wouldn't want to make too much of an impact. Because that's important that the Night Elves can have enough mana on their Druids of the Claw to actually bounce back and forth between utilizing the, the Rejuve. Remove Mark of the Claw upgrade from the game. Some more punishment like above. So Mark of the Claw, you mean... How can you say punishment, though? Mark of the Claw... I thought it may as well just be made baseline. Or if you're not going to make it baseline, then go down the path of essentially just reducing the cooldown, or rather the duration it takes for all researches, such as ones that are niche like this, where they're very specific to a class. They can cast raw in bear form. You mean forbid it? You hate that. Only cast raw in druid form. Oh, I don't know. I feel like that's maybe too much of a big change. I'm not sure where I sit with that. I think it's important for them to have the ability to use raw in bear form. Because it allows them to remove their mana when they're against spellbreakers so they take less damage. If they choose to do so, at least the ones at the front. But I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference one way or the other. But you've got to be careful with too many like changes like that as it would affect like the pro Night Elf players. They might have different opinions about that one. <laughs> Change better visibility of possession. Yeah, maybe Shackle-like line. Maybe even with Banshee Shadow moving along the line to show progress. Oh, that's kind of cool. Like this... Slow moving Banshee and the closer it gets towards the target is basically the cast time it takes. So if it took five seconds, it takes five seconds for this sort of shadowy Banshee to reach. But yeah, I think a nice simplistic line could be very good for really telling which unit's being possessed. If you saw like a straight line from the Banshee to the unit, it would make it much clearer because possession is a bit of a nightmare sometimes. What happens is, is the Banshee does a little thing where she starts sort of doing a casting animation and the target has this sort of white circle thing above it, but it's very small and you don't spot it most of the time. If you're Even if you're trying to look for it, it's pretty hard to spot, not to mention that you've only got a limited amount of time to spot it. So killing the Banshee in time is tricky. Very powerful spell and countering it is made so much harder by visibility issues. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Better visibility is fine. It doesn't change the spell itself, but it makes it easier for it to be punished rather than the player getting away with it just because of the clunkiness of the uh, visibility. Add two seconds cooldown on the Kodo Devour. Maybe Kodo could benefit from frost armor upgrades. Powerful and low units count skirmishes. Miss Devour is not punished enough. Hmm. I, uh... Kodos are a bit of a... I don't think you can touch them too much. As much as it seems crazy strong that Kodos can devour a unit. A lot of the time, at least... Depends what they're against. Less so versus human. Because I don't even see humans building that many sorceresses these days to actually cast slow. A lot of the time they just go heavy on priests and nice knights. So it is hard to deal with kodos from a human's perspective i know that much but as undead you can see them nuke the hell out of kodos the moment they try to sort of do anything funny 
And they're quite squishy because they have a lot of piercing damage and the Kodos have bugger all armor. So that would help versus the undead and it would help versus the human. Two second cooldown on Kodo Devour though. So yeah, okay, I'm alright with that. Because what they do is they just keep chomping <laughs> until it eventually works or they just run away because they know the opponent's going to pull the unit out and they're not going to let them get Kodo Devoured. Maybe add a one second cooldown. So it's very brief, but it stops them from like just spamming Kodo Devour until it eventually works. Something along those lines. You think two seconds is not enough? And as far as I test it, it seems you could shift click with Devour. Alright, well, that could be play, played around with, but I'm not against that necessarily. Change Troll Berserker hit points from 475 to 450. Stats are too good. They are. Troll Berserkers are one of these units that are super awesome because they're a two food unit that's pretty damn cheap and they stack up very nicely, unlike most of the other tier 1 units. The only other tier 1 units that really stack up well are archers, but even they can be punished a lot and they have a lot less health. The only problem is, again, I see I see a lot of the time Troll Berserkers, they have issues of getting killed pretty easily by Panda Breath of Fire or Frost Nova. So certain AoE abilities can absolutely trounce Berserkers to the point where they're not actually that much of a problem in the mid to late game if the hero levels are strong. So I don't know about reducing the hit points too much. It's only a 25 hit point reduction, so I'm not too sure on that one. But it's something to consider that they can be punished. Even though they're cheap, costly, uh, cost-effective, they are very fragile if uh, they're misplayed or if the opponent can see an opportunity to AoE them down. Rifleman range from 400 to 450. Upgrade still 600. HH range from 550 to 500. This is the one change I actually thought of similar myself. Rifleman range is actually pretty damn trash, but I don't know if you want to bump it all the way to 450. Maybe 400 to 425, and then if you made the HH range from 550 to somewhere between 500 and 525, one or the other. I think HH range is too good at the moment. Like, their cost effectiveness, they're so effective at, like, hitting targets that are just ever so slightly further than they should be able to be hit by a headhunter, I think makes a big difference whether they actually sort of secure lots of kills and then they snowball even more. Leave Berserkers range 550. So yeah, you can have Berserkers get the range upgrade, but I think, yeah, if you nerf the original Headhunters range to 500, that would make them a bit more balanced because at the moment they're, they're basically just archers. They're being played a lot like archers in that sense. Meteor archers. Archers upgraded range from 700 to 675. Either that, or you just reduce the damage, like Grubby said, by one to archers, which isn't much, but it also helps a little bit. Archer range is kind of bonkers, but if anyone was going to have that range, I guess it's kind of cool that archers have that unique playstyle. I would either do that, where you reduce the range from 700 to 675, or you reduce their damage from the upgrade at tier 3. Reduce duration or slow rate from Dryad's attack, Frost Armor, and the Rubian Tower. Well, this I won't argue with. It's very tedious to fight against any of these things. Dryad attacks... There's, there's different ways to go around this one. Different ways to go around this one. What I thought of when you basically put this down here is what if the Dryad's slow poison had like an internal cooldown? So that if it hits a target, there's like a, let's say, a three second, three to five second sort of like cast time before the next Dryad hit from that Dryad actually casts slow poison again. So, say for example, it attacks. It does slow poison. It attacks again. It doesn't do slow poison. And then the next attack, it would do slow poison sort of thing. So there's like a kind of a, a gap in between that tedious, consistent slow poison that Dryads have, which almost guarantees kills far more than perhaps it should do, considering they're quite cheap as well. Frost armor is tedious. 
I think reducing, Grubby said like reduce it from 50% to 40%, that's fine. Again, you've got to do like small changes, so that's fine. The Rubian Tower is ridiculous. It's a 50% slow. If you took it down to 30%, I think that would still be okay. But I wouldn't want to nerf it that much because, again, like I say, these changes need to be minimal, really. Otherwise, you're going to affect things too much. So, but it could definitely be taken from a 50% to like a 40% slow. Definitely. Lower statue spirit touch from 3 to 2 or 2.25 mana per cast per 1.5 seconds. Too powerful currently, same as level 3 brilliance if casted non-stop, which it often is. If the player is good enough to control them in between their, you know, their play with undead units. Uh, I don't know if you can have 2.25 mana on the, in the editor. I don't know if that's an option. I don't know if it has to be a fixed flat number like 3 or 2, which makes it way trickier to balance around. Because going from 3 to 2 is actually a very significant nerf. But something like 3 to 2.5 would be like, fine. Because it just brings it down just a touch. Because I think Undead have a bit too stay too much staying power. Where a lot of the time it feels like they should be punished. They've cast their spells. They've done their job. But they'll basically then dance back and forth. Whilst utilizing... If they're good. Whilst utilizing the statue. To give the Death Knight and the Lich mana continuously. To the point where they can just cast another coil. Cast another Nova. And they'll do that back and forth. And with the Unholy Aura... They can't really be punished for it because they're so fast. So if you try to chase them down, you just have to eventually back off from them. And then they get their mana back and then they nuke, pick off another target that's more experienced than them, that's less for you. And it just snowballs from there. So I think statues give way too much staying power as they currently are. So I would agree with reducing it, but I don't know how you can do it to 2.25 if it can be done. But I would take it to 2.5. I wouldn't go all the way down to 2.25. It's not like a massive difference between 2.25 or 2.5, but just remember, the way I would approach this is, as, as tempting as it is, I can't talk too much without my voice going. As tempting as it is to really hammer in some things that are quite blatantly strong, you have to make really tiny adjustments, I think, because it's going to have a knock-on effect with everything. Right, you've got attack type. Versus armor table. Change piercing versus heavy armor. One more swig. At least for a moment. That will keep me going for one more sentence. Alright. Attack type versus armor table. Change piercing versus heavy armor. From 100% to 95%. Little nerf for piercing versus their intended unit counter. Right. Now, I don't think anyone's going to sort of accept that, even though I know what you're trying to do with that. Because it does change some of the fundamental core mechanics of Warcraft 3, or at least as people understand it, damage types. When you're changing a unit stats, I think you can get away with that. But I think if you change, like, attack versus armor, that changes maybe too much across the board. But I know what you're saying. And this was worse in Reign of Chaos when you used to be able to beat mass Torrens with mass archers. <laughs> because back then, Pearson did even more damage to heavy armor. But I think the way to solve that would probably be more likely to give heavy armor units such as like, you know, the ones that are definitely intended to counter like abominations and knights, just more damage. So if they had slightly higher damage or something, that would make up for them being able to punish the archers more when they actually hit the target. But I'm not necessarily against that. If it went from 100% to 95%, I'll be okay with it. But I don't think that's going to that's gonna land with, like, all of the pro players. I can't imagine, like, you know, the Asian pro players or the Europeans, Americans being like, yeah, we're okay with 100% going to 95%. I can't imagine them taking that one. Peasant health buff, plus 10, easiest to harass. Yeah, that's a simple change. You either give them plus 10 health, or you give them some sort of reduction of damage taken from AoE spells, in my opinion. They, that The only issue with that, on both counts, is 
you could go down the road where you give them both. But that may be too strong. But if you give them like the reduction versus AoE spells, they're still super vulnerable to an Archmage picking up, uh, not an Archmage, a Farseer picking them off with Feral Spirit. That doesn't help them in that situation. But if you give them the 10 health buff, that doesn't help them. And they don't get like the reduction to AoE spells. They still get absolutely slaughtered by a Warden or something like that. That just pops in and goes, hello, fan of knives, blinks out. Pops back in, fan of nice. See you later. Like, you just cannot do anything versus that. Other than have, like, a Zeppelin waiting there to pick up all the peasants, which then interrupts your gold. And you have to be aware and ready to do it before the fan of nice hits. Good luck doing that, to be quite frank with you. So, uh... Yeah, I thought about animal war training, but that's a tier 3 upgrade, and it's normally too late by that point. That would give peasants more health. I think peasants could get like um, 50, 10 health minimum, I would think. Who did these notes? Chuddy did. I think 10 health would be lovely, at the very least. I think they'd need more, to be honest. But if you give them too much, then it kind of goes against sort of them. They're, they're now tankier than. Uh, <laughs> they're tankier than um, peons, aren't they? In terms of health wise. But uh, yeah, I think. Peasants need a health buff, definitely, one way or another. It's just how you go about doing it. Acolyte regen on Blight nerf from 3 to 2 or less. Impossible to harass with units count. Yeah, I mean, what was the buff that they got to Blight? Because basically Blizzard went a little bit crazy and then made Undead, like, even more impossible to attack within their base. It was already like you never attack an Undead base. But then they went and gave Acolytes faster movement speed. They gave Blight health, higher health regeneration to all undead units fighting on it. And of course you've got the Nerubian Towers, which are obnoxious as all hell with the 50% slow. So that combination makes it like just ridiculous, the advantage that undead have. So I would be okay with Blight getting a nerf. Again, if you were going to do like 3 to 2, I'd probably just do like 3 to 2.5 or something like that. It has to be like a sort of a... You're looking at like 10 to 20% nerfs or buffs, give or take, at most. So you're not impacting too much. Batrider slightly reduce main explosion damage, but increase AoE damage instead. Bats are too efficient versus large air. They were intended to be the most efficient versus packs of light air. I don't know if I agree with that. It takes like four bats to take down a frost worm. Like three bats to take down a griffin. Maybe two. Depends on how much armor upgrade you got. Because you can at least fight against bat riders with armor upgrades. So there's some sort of counterplay there. I don't know. I don't know if I would change bats. I think they do too much damage. And their ability to reduce the... Well, stop the opponent from repairing is ridiculous. I think that shouldn't... I think the opponent should be able to repair, but at like a 25% rate or something. You know, way slower. But like no repair and stuff like that from liquid fire. I think liquid fire is crazy strong. But I don't know about changing the explosion damage. Changing snare web pool when spot below unit is occupied, being bring unit down at nearest spot below it, not to raid a fiend. I don't know that can be changed. I don't know exactly what dictates it, but sometimes when a raider or a fiend webs and then snares. Well, this is more with the fiend using web versus an air unit. Sometimes it just pulls it down to the ground. I think it's dependent upon where the land in position is and the doodads such as trees blocking but even then sometimes it kind of teleports the unit into the orc army and if that happens you you have no chance of saving the unit if it brings it that close when slot under the flying unit is occupied then it pulls it to the raider or fiend see that's the problem yeah okay it's not doing something where it brings it to the next location that it can pull it down to it just takes it straight to the raider or fiend that's how it does it then Yes, I agree then. It should be to the next freest spot. So if it can't pull it straight down because there's a unit blocking, it just goes one step below it. But at the moment, yeah, what it will do is it will go, boom, right towards where the unit's pulled it from, which is 
crazy. Because that's a guaranteed, yeah, it's a guaranteed kill, basically, if that happens. Deny wisps getting on unreachable trees. Ah, oh, this is so irritating. If unit of size of wisp cannot reach to attack wisp on a tree, wisp should not be able to hop on such tree. Yep, I agree with that. I can't believe that's still in the game, to be honest. Like, even if you put effort in to scout it, like with a footman, all your footman's going to do is he's going to stare at the wisp. He just goes back and forth going, hmm, there's a wisp there. But he actually literally can't attack it, even though it looks like he's within range to attack it. Because it's just ever so slightly out of the range. So you have to have a range unit to attack it. But human very rarely can go rifleman because it costs lumber and all that. They have to wait a while. And using one rifleman to pick off a scouting wisp in a various location isn't particularly efficient. So the footman is much better at picking off wisps. And it should be able to do so. So yeah, wisps definitely should not be able to get to unreachable areas. Because that's just plain exploitive at that point. That's a that's a guaranteed change. That should definitely not be in the game. Change Fire Lord range from 550 to 600. All right, okay. So if he's the only hero with 550 range, I think that's okay. I'm just a bit worried because with any buffs to the Fire Lord, he is kind of a trash hero. Highly regarded as a trash hero. However, he is still incredibly strong in those tier 2 push moments. Where people will instantaneously pick up the hero and then put a bucket load of pressure. And sometimes you cannot handle it. So I'm really cautious to give Fire Lord any buffs whatsoever. And an extra 50 range could make him quite devastating. But if it's not giving him an advantage in the sense that he's a, got extra range above other heroes, then that's okay. Because if other heroes have 600 and he doesn't, then I think that's alright to bring him on in line. Buff the Fire Lord incinerate stack damage from 234 to 369. You're going crazy on that one. Currently at level 1, 9 consecutive attacks give you the same damage buff as 9 Seer and Arrows. And at level 3, it is 14 consecutive. I don't know, that's a dangerous one to play around with that. It's fun, incinerate. And I wouldn't go as far to say it's overpowered, but you got to be careful with that one, because you can stack up a lot of damage, particularly against heroes. If someone's actually doing a good job of focusing a hero continuously with a Fire Lord and Incinerate, they can actually stack up way more than Orb of Venom ever does. Uh, so I'm not sure on that one. Give range buff to Incinerate, same as for Searing Arrow. Maybe make this range buff autocast an official... You really like Fire Lord, don't you? Is this overclocked who made these patch notes? An official change to 600, 650, 700. Gives some uniqueness to this poor hero. Would also help get some more value from damage stacks. So if you've got Incinerate on, you get extra range. I didn't know it did that for Searing Arrow, actually. That's interesting. I think I'd be more in line with that buff than increasing the damage from it, if that makes sense. Tinker rockets should hit when they were fired, regardless if Tinker moves. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's definite. At the moment, the way Tinker rockets works is you have to fully cast the spell for the stun to actually impact. I think this even goes for some of the damage. I don't know if all of the damage is negated if you, like, cast 90% of the spell and then move, if that makes sense. Because you can stop your spells a lot of the time, particularly channel ones. It's kind of this pseudo channel spell, Goblin Tinker Rockets, where you can cast it, and then if you're trying to move after about 0.5 seconds of casting it, because you're intended to stun the opponent, but also catch up with them, the stun never actually lands, even if the rockets literally land on the opponent. If you, uh, what's this? Rockets that hit hit, but rockets that are flying will not hit when you move the Tinker. Ah, oh, okay. I see. I think that's fine. Goblin Tinker rockets aren't really overpowered in any way, shape, or form. They did get buffed to hit air units, which is fantastic, but that's not super amazing at the moment to change, like, Goblin Tinker rockets being picked. So, yes. Make it so they work, basically. Make clock work, uh, clockworks, detonation, targeting, same as sappers, to make it easy to detonate them, even all at once. So clockworks, 
detonation targeting the same as sappers. Wait, 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 what's this? Clock works, detonation at targeting, same as sappers to make it easy to detonate them even all at once. So you could highlight them all and then detonate in the same area. Currently it's some horrible AoE mark, impossible to set off. I don't know this one so well. I know what you're talking about, but I've very rarely ever had a problem with this. But if it helps the game play smoother, then sure, I'll be okay with that. So you, you gotta say, in my opinion, current balance is very good. Maybe best it ever was, and the game is very entertaining. Probably most entertaining as it ever was. But case for minor imbalance can be made, and I personally think currently Undead, Night Elf, Orc, you, yeah, I think the same. That's basically how it is right now. However, we should also consider that balance can change without patches, just from shifts in meta or skill from players. I'm not a high skill player, I watch moderate amount of high school games. Okay, so yeah, basically, I think I agree with all the vast majority of these. Again, my point would be that if there were any changes, it needs to be like 10 to 25% at most. 10 to 20%, something along those lines, give or take. So, we currently do have pretty good balance. But there are things that do seem too strong. So, you just need to find a way just to touch them down so minorly that it's not going to make the unit suddenly unplayable it's just the player is going to have to be smarter about how they use it that's what it comes down to things that are too strong they have to be smarter yeah that's fair enough i agree with a lot of that yeah sappers have a crosshair and you just select crockworks have aoe marker like blizzard and you cannot set it off how do you even come you always come across these strange things don't you that no one else even notices <laughs> but fair enough i'll be down for that all right, thank you very much. There you go. That's annoying Warcraft's patch notes. Apparently too biased towards human. There's a lot of buffs towards human, but that is probably because they're the weakest at the moment. I, yeah, I, I might have to do my patch notes at some point. Problem is, is there's so much I would potentially want to change, even if it's like only a 10 to 20% give or take either way, that the patch notes would be so damn big it kind of becomes overwhelming. So yeah, there is a, like a, it's difficult because how much do you change? You have to almost sit back and not change things that you think should be changed because before you know it, each and every single unit's getting like buff sword nerfs and it gets a bit crazy. All right, cool, thank you very much.